Okay, here's our Allen Bradley PowerFlex 40 VFD. We're just doing the initial unboxing right now. Don't know what this is. Later we're going to set this up for a water pumping application. Maybe your well pump, or in this case, uh, it's just simulating a water supply from a utility company. So we're just going to take off the front cover. Now we see we've got a jumper from uh, the 24 volts to the stop input. We're going to be removing that for our application, and we're just going to be using a start signal. Um, the power connections are under here. That just slides right down and there's a groove for it to fit into and snap back in later. Let's start with our power wires and then we'll put on the control signals next. So this video is for the PowerFlex 40 VFD by uh, Alan Bradley Rockwell Automation. Um, we're going to be setting it up for a water pump application. So the feedback is going to be a 4 to 20 milliamp signal coming from a pressure transducer in the line. And we want to set it up for approximately 60 PSI. The feedback loop should uh, keep it there. And these are the parameters that we're going to need to set. Um, if the drive programming is not known, set configure, configuration parameter P41 to one. That'll set the drive back to factory defaults. So that's been done already. And next we're going to set all of these. I've got them in numerical order here. So got a description next to each one explaining what's going to what each parameter is going to do for us um, p036 uh, is normally and basically all of these are changed um, from the default with, with the exception of these two those got changed back to the default so uh, P036, that means the drive motor is going to start when the start signal is high and it's set up for a regular switch, not a momentary con contact. Uh, when the signal goes low, it's going to stop. Next, P37 is going to allow the motor to coast to stop. Uh, the default is to ramp it down, say from 60 hertz slowly uh, for, for 10 seconds down to zero hertz. So we're just going to set it uh, to coast and that'll set it to zero hertz as soon as we hit the stop. Next, uh, which is kind of unnecessary for the application, but I like it, A052 is uh, for discrete input number two. When that is set, uh, with a parameter number of, or value of 15, when that gets set, then it's not going to use the PID loop. That's PID disable, and the drive will just use the front panel speed reference, the potentiometer on the front panel. For a water pump, we want to disable the reverse. Um, these two are not necessary. Um, you would invert these um, if your sensor was wired differently. Um, A32 PID reference, set that to one, and then that's going to use the parameter in A37 as the PID reference. So for a sensor from zero to 100 PSI, this value can go anywhere from zero to 100%. Conveniently, we set that to 60 for 60 PSI. 
Um, going back up here, A133, uh, that's setting the feedback to the 4 to 20 milliamp input exclusively. You could also set that as a trim setting where it may use another control source like the drive potentiometer on the front panel uh, and then use, uh, use that uh, to just trim the output for the feedback. Um, and lastly, uh, to prevent tampering, you can set this A101 to a 1, that's program lock. So we'll go ahead with the programming here. If the drive starts up in an unknown state, change parameter P41 to 1 to restore to factory defaults. I have to power cycle. F4 is for low voltage input. Or I should say AC voltage input's too low, so a temporary shows that when it powers down. All right, now we'll be able to set up our parameters. Hit select, hit escape. Escape again if we're not on the right parameter. Now we can go up to the P group, enter 36, should be set to 3. Three seven. set to 1. The program button or program LED lights up when we've made a change from the default and hit enter to commit it. Now the A group, so we hit escape to get back to the group. This is going to be 15 for PID disable and uh, when that happened we now see that the LED is on showing that the front panel potentiometer is controlling the drive speed. A95, this is reverse disable. Enter. And now we can see that the reverse button doesn't do anything, it stays on the forward position. So. One thirty two. Thirty-three. Also a one for four to twenty feedback. A one thirty-seven. We're going to set to sixty, but uh, hit the select button to move over. Sixty. Enter. Now if I ever wanted to change the PSI setting in the future, hit select, find the A group, enter, find 137 parameter, and then set your value up or down. This is going to set the, the PSI or a, a percentage of the 4 to 20 signal, really. And let's go ahead and do the A101 program lock. 
to prevent Todd from tampering with it. Okay, I've hit the start button and we can see we uh, are controlling it with the pop on the front of the drive and when we change over to the discrete input number two it's going to be controlled by the 4 to 20 input and we see that's changed now we're not seeing my voltage there we are okay so this potentiometer is changing the 4 to 20 milliamp input and that's represented here by a 1 to 5 volt signal so when our voltage gets to around 3.4 that's the set point and since the drive ramped up to maximum already 60 hertz then we'll start to see it come back the other direction and there we are 3.8 and it's moving pretty quickly back down and then I'm gonna adjust the potentiometer to something lower than 3.4 and we'll see the drive increase in speed now and there it's going back up I'll try and stop it somewhere in the middle right at 3.4 there's gonna be some dead zone where uh, the drive doesn't change at all having some problems finding that dead zone but we can see that the frequency is moving very very slowly here right around 3.4 Excellent. So that's how you set up a PowerFlex 40 VFD. Let's power cycle, make sure our settings are stuck. When we first turn on power, drive is not active. We have to reapply the start signal. So there we go. And it's already at the set point, so I'm going to need to move that lower down to the minimum, and we see it ramping up. And now it's ramping down. It's at the maximum four, uh, I mean 20 milliamps now. And yeah, it works in both directions. Try and get it again to hover around that set point. All right, looking good.